Hey everyone, this is Andrew from MobileBurn.com and I'm taking a look at the Nokia Lumia 920 available for AT&T. The first thing you'll notice about the Lumia 920 is its color choice. Uh, Nokia chose a bunch of bold, popping colors. Uh, this is a cyan matte finish. If you get the black, it's also matte. But if you go for the red, the yellow, or the orange, or white, you'll get a high glossy back. This one is more matte and it's more regular and just, but it's still smooth and solid. And it's actually pretty good because I've dropped this on concrete several times and it still remained uh, durable and it's lasted. Aside from that, you'll notice that it's also kind of on the big side. It has 10.7 millimeters in depth. So this is a chunky phone, as you can see. Uh, the sides curve a little bit and in the back they meet and it, it protrudes a lot. As far as the rest of the imposing figure, it's 70.8 millimeters by 130.3 millimeters. And it's a little on the heavy side, actually not a little, it's very noticeably heavier than the iPhone or the Galaxy S3, other phones that you may have seen, it's notably heavier at 185 grams. Uh, as for button placement, at the top you have your SIM slot, you have your headphone jack, on the right, you have your volume up and down buttons, and then you have your power button in the middle, which uh, you, you typically don't see, but it's feel, still very easy to manage, very comfortable. At the bottom, you have a dedicated camera button. On, on the bottom of the phone, you have two speaker ports, which are actually very loud. I've actually had it where I stand up the phone, just leave it like that while it's playing music, and I can still hear the music, and it's very nice. You also have your charging port, and it exposes the points where the, the different joints are joined together. The screen, it protrudes a little bit from it. It has like a contour and it sticks up a little, but it's a smooth transition when you get to the end. You'll notice like a tiny little rim, but other than that, it's still very nice. And let's talk about the screen a little more. The screen is 4.5 inches, and there are a lot of marking terms that Nokia uses to describe it. They say readability, uh, clear black, uh, pure motion. There's a lot of things they say in, in plain English. Let's go through them. Clear black is about the color displays that the blacks are going to look normal uh, how it's supposed to be. Uh, when you get close, you can see some other things. I mean, uh, it's the reds are going to look like red. Uh, the yellows are going to look like yellow. So it's a, a very solid color reproduction of what you expect. The screen itself has a very nice resolution. It's uh, HD, it's 1280 by 768, and it has a density of 332 pixels per inch. Very nice, very clear. And you can see when I move it at certain angles, uh, the visibility is still strong. And it's an interesting because when they mention readability, uh, even when you're outdoors in direct sunlight, you can still see your screen fairly clearly. When you zoom in on text, the text looks very crisp, very easy to read, uh, very nice to look at. So when you're outdoors, even if you turn a little to, you might lose some visibility, but compared to what you other see, uh, other devices, what you see on there, this still has a very nice screen uh, when it comes to outdoor visibility. And it just, to note, it has Gorilla Glass, so it's going to withstand a little more scratches. It's going to be a little more uh, damage resistant than your average device that doesn't have Gorilla Glass 2.0. One thing I don't like is the brightness settings. You can automatically adjust it to have it determine if it should be high when you're outdoors or low when you're indoors and don't need it. But there's no sliding scale, so you can't say 70% or 60%. You have either low, medium, or high, and those are your only choices. There are three navigation buttons on the Lumia 920. You have your start button, which always brings you back to the start screen, search, which has a dedicated Bing search, and you have the back button, which brings you to the previous screen. The cool thing is that when you hold down on the back button, it brings up this little multitasking view so you can switch between apps and choose which one you want to go back to. I'm going to go to speed test so I can show you how fast the phone moves. It has LTE built into it. Uh, obviously, LTE will vary by area. It also has HSPA+, Plus, uh, so you can get fast internet there, 4G of different standards by AT&T. Uh, it has NFC charging in the back, so in addition to transferring data between uh, 
files but between devices it also has the Q wireless charging so if you go to a compatible plate that, that is sold separately in an airport or that you buy yourself you just put it down and your phone will charge you don't have to plug in a cord or anything like that and here you can see the results of the test uh, 7.6 uh, millibytes per second upload not too great so I'm in an HSP area at the moment I'm not an LTE uh, one complaint that I have is there's no way to disable LTE so if you don't want to if LTE consumes more battery so if you want to get rid of that there's not an option for you to easily do that while we're on the subject of battery this has a 2000 milliamp battery and it does very well actually I've gotten almost 15 hours of moderate usage depending on what I'm doing if I'm just tweeting or uh, listening to music if I'm browsing the web at the moment I've got 43% left because I haven't really used it for a while but it's been off the charger uh, for about a day and a half uh, but it's been pretty good actually aside from that usability it has a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor Snapdragon uh, things move along fairly well I noticed that scrolling isn't as fast as you'll see in Android or iOS but uh, when you're browsing through for like apps or something, that's not an issue because you can press search and then you can start. Oh wait, hold on. I press the act. I press the physical search button instead of the virtual one. If I'm searching for an app like Evernote, all I have to do is type EV and then it filters and it knows what I'm trying to get to. Uh, it also has a gigabyte of RAM, so things move along fairly quickly, like I mentioned. It has 32 gigabytes of internal storage to store all your files. And if you want to go in the cloud and get a little more space, it comes with SkyDrive integration built in. So you can get 7 gigabytes of additional storage space or just get your usual, your usual SkyDrive storage. Now, it's fitting that I mentioned SkyDrive because you'll notice that I mentioned SkyDrive and not Dropbox. That's because there's no official Dropbox app for uh, Windows Phone, and that's kind of a problem that I ran into with using this phone. The software itself is great, but when it comes to third-party app choices, there aren't many. You go into the store and you look for Dropbox, there's no official Dropbox client. There's a Spotify Windows Phone 7 client, but it's not on Windows Phone 8 yet. There's no Pandora. There's uh, no Instagram. Pretty much any Google app that you use other than search probably won't be there. There are some good choices uh, when you go into the market. You can browse it. The Facebook app is not that great, but to be fair, Facebook has terrible apps on pretty much every platform now. Uh, there is Netflix. There is Amazon. There are some alternatives. Like There's no Instagram like I mentioned, but there's a really nice app called Photo Room. Uh, when you do that, you take a picture you import from your camera or just a picture you grab that and then you can go to settings the settings that they have I actually like better than Instagram but the problem is when it comes time to share the photos uh, who are you sharing with because most of the people that you know are probably on Instagram so it'd be easier to have that kind of client you wish that they had that but aside from that the built-in software is actually pretty good let's take a look at some of those now there are a lot of great apps that are built into it. Even though there's an absence of third-party apps, the, the apps that come with the phone are pretty dang good. Uh, for instance, here's Office. You can create Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, or Excel spreadsheets. You can create them or read them. So I can create a blank document and say, you know what, I want to go make a spreadsheet or I want to edit a spreadsheet. I can actually do that from my phone. This is pretty much uh, the most full-featured version that you, you would expect. Uh, it doesn't have everything that you do on the desktop, obviously, but as far as light editing, simple creation of files, it has it all and does what you need. Other options when you browse maps, you have CityLens, which is basically an augmented reality app. You hold the phone like this, you move around, and it shows you information about nearby places of interest. Uh, you also have Transit, which gives you uh, transit directions, and you have Nokia Drive, which gives you live navigation. There's also Nokia Music, uh, which is another pre-installed Nokia app, and as the name implies, it plays music. It gives you the option, it's like a hub, uh, you can play an artist, like a genre, say you like the top world charts, or you can say, I like uh, Wiz Khalifa, create a radio station based on him. It also has gigs, which basically finds nearby concerts to you. So I can see right now, hey, uh, God... 
BB King Blues Club, Godfrey Townsend it gives me the information about the who, what, the when, and the where, and I can purchase tickets through Songkick. It's a cool feature. If you're a music fan, those are the type of things that are going to interest you. Uh, you can also purchase songs from the Nokia Music Store, but there's another music option on here, and that's Xbox Music, which I actually prefer. That's because this syncs across your Windows platform. So if you've got uh, Windows 8 on the computer, it syncs your playlist in your collection. If you've got uh, Xbox, it does that as well. So I can listen to a song, I can download it and have it stored for offline playback, or I can stream it. I can purchase it outright so I always own it and do whatever I want with it or I can just have like little lockers where it chooses lets me choose albums and songs to listen to and the, the, the design is very nice obviously and like I mentioned before the Lumia 920 is very loud I like the way that they do this uh, but Sometimes it's a little hard to, to get to. Uh, for instance, like if I have music stored on the device, it's not as easy to separate which is streaming, which is stored on the device. But other than that, so a minor uh, minor annoyance. It also has a history showing the songs that I've listened to recently. And this is cool because it uh, shows everything. If I stream the Kanye West song, it plays it. If I created a playlist, it shows that I access that playlist. So I can get back to it fairly quickly. And it shows what I've been listening to. And I say, you know what? I want to listen to some Little Dragon again. I tap on that and it goes to this, the format. It knows how I was listening to it before, which is streaming. And it does that automatically for me. Now on the desktop, Internet Explorer doesn't have the best representation. But it's actually very nice on Windows Phone. Here I am loading up the ESPN web page. And I say, you know what? I visit this page a lot. What do I want to do? I can choose to mark it as a favorite. Or I can say... I want to pin it to the start so I can always access it and all I have to do is tap on it. But when I tap on the page, I notice that this is the desktop version. It takes a little long, longer to load. Uh, when you go into the settings page, you can actually change how you prefer to view pages. So if I switch to mobile version, the next time I go to ESPN, it'll launch uh, the mobile version automatically. E -S I keep typing R. Why do you type R? There's an E right next to it. Excuse me, I'm talking to myself. The next time I go to ESPN, it knows to switch to the mobile version, as you can see right there. Aside from that, there are some nice features. Uh, there's tabs, so if I tap on tabs, I can switch between pages, switch between tabs, excuse me. I can close that one, load this web page, and you saw I did it very quickly. Uh, fast switching between the two. I can access my favorites. I can share the page through however a variety of ways. Uh, other than that, uh, there's not many t great breakaway features to talk about or uh, this find on page, obviously. But uh, what it lacks for in features, it makes up for in speed. It loads loads pages very quickly. It scores high on JavaScript and HTML5 tests. So if you're just looking for something solid to browse the web and to get, get around quickly, this is going to be a pleasant app to use. Uh, it doesn't have as many of the great... Uh, desktop sync features and all that stuff, but the text displays clearly. Uh, it zooms in and out very fluidly. You can move around the page, obviously, and it works well. Windows Phone has a nice little lock screen that tells you how many unread messages you have or little alerts as well. You can slide up or you can put some security on there or you can choose not to have a passcode. This is the start screen. It's basically your jumping off point for all of the important apps you want to get to or any of the notifications that you want to get. There's no notification center, but it has live tiles. Live tiles are basically a quick display of information. Uh, you can see the photo gallery has been changing a little bit while I've been talking. Aside from that, it shows how many email message, emails that I have unread. Uh, I can tap on one of them and it'll bring me to the Gmail app. When I go back, I can also get messages for missed calls or that I have an app to update right there. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that it's incredibly customizable. What you do is you basically hold down. So let's say I don't want my email to take up so much space. I just hold down on it. And then I, if I tap this button right here, that removes it completely. But if I tap that, it makes it smaller. Uh, I can do the same thing with this. I can make it take up half a screen, 
just one tile and then go there or I can expand it and take up the whole screen. Not every app is gonna, is gonna, not every live tile is gonna give you that option, but it's something that you can do. And if you want, you can reposition them. So let's say I'm following something on ESPN and I wanna make sure I have all the scores. I just hold down and then I drag up to the top and then I just find a place to put it and then reposition stuff. And then you can just go about uh, customizing it the way you want and that makes it much better. You can also set live tiles for individual people. So I have one of my friends there, I have a live tile of myself, and when I tap on that, it shows uh, my most recent update, as well as some of the notification that I've gotten. And I can go back. If I go home to the start screen, I can see my friend's update and view his individual profile and pretty much do the same thing. Now, there's other ways to communicate with groups. Uh, let me tap on this little hub right here and you have two options you have groups which I showed you before which basically shows a cultivated view of some of your contacts or you can have what's called rooms rooms are basically like a dedicated group place where you can communicate with others you have their email accounts you can send mass emails to the group you can chat within the group you can send uh, mass text you can have a shared calendar, shared photo, so any photo, photo that I post will be shared with everyone who's in the room and any photo they post will be shared with us as well. Uh, now, there are some there's some good things about this and some bad. For instance, the notes. Let's say I share a note with my wife. I create a grocery list, say, oh, we need this. But, oh, she sees this. She's in the grocery store and she happens to buy milk. She checks that off. Now I know not to buy milk when I go to the store. That's a pretty cool feature, but the problem with this is that it's pretty much limited to Windows Phone 8. You can get rooms, some features on Android and iOS, but it's not a full slate of features. And to access some of them, you actually have to go into individual apps. Like you have to go into OneNote, you have to go into your calendar. So there are some links outside, but as far as a full integrated solution, there isn't one. There's no group chat unless everyone's on Windows Phone 8. And Statistically speaking, you probably don't know many people carrying around one of these. So having that limited is kind of disappointed unless Microsoft releases a full, uh, full featured app that goes across platform. Rooms are not gonna be as useful as you would like. If I was forced to cite one reason why you should buy the Lumia 920, I'd say it'd be this thing, the camera. The camera on here is actually very good. In daylight, it's not that much more impressive than what you typically see, but in low light settings, it's without question the best smartphone that camera you can have. Uh, it takes better pictures in the dark, uh, the flash is more balanced. It's all around just a flat out better camera when you're in low light settings. And I think that might be reason enough for a lot of people. Uh, my previous phone did a terrible job in low light, a lot of noise. This doesn't have as much. Aside from that, it also has what's called lenses, which basically allows you to alter the camera. So this is a panorama lens made by Nokia. I can download that. And what I do is I can tap to start and then as I move around, it tells me when to move to the next one and then it stitches all of them together, right? Okay, then I can also get this one that it recognizes it's better for faces. So it's like smart shot. If one person is moving around a little too much or they look the wrong way, their eyes were closed, I can take multiple photos and it'll choose the best one. Uh, let me go back. And then there's cinemagraphs, which basically when you're one, if there's you want to isolate motion in one area, you can do that. And all of these lenses can be downloaded. Other people can make their own lenses. You can access them through this button right here, which allows you to switch between different lenses, choose which one works best for you. You can play around with the settings. You can change the ISO. You can change exposure, white balance, aspect ratio, or the focus light. I'd advise you, even if you're using the default regular settings, it still takes very good pictures. So it's hard to go wrong with this when it comes to smartphone cameras. This is pretty much the best one that I've seen in low light without question. And compared to other phones in daylight, it does pretty good as well. I've been using the Lumia 920 for about a month now. And my overall impression of the phone is that it's a great device. 
The only problem I have with it is the software. And no, I'm not talking about Windows Phone 8 because I actually think Windows Phone 8 is a nice change of pace for what I'm used to seeing with Android and iOS. I like the customization factors. I like how you can personalize things. You see, I've had three different themes since I've opened this up. And if I want to change the position of, of live tiles, it's very easy to do. I have a lot of options. My problem is when it goes into the store and I'm searching for something. I use Pandora every day. It's not there yet. I know it's coming, but it's not there yet. I use Instagram all the time. I rely on Dropbox heavily. There are days when I want to just leave the house with the 920, but I can't because I need to have Dropbox. And the third party clients that I've seen on here, I'm just not a fan of. So I've had to bring along another phone with me. This phone is a great phone. And I think at some point the app situation is going to be realized and that there's going to be parity between uh, Windows phone and Android or iOS. But that day is not today. I also had a problem with certain apps that just aren't as fast as the default apps. When I go, I see a lot of loading. See that loading thing? You're gonna see a lot of that uh, most of the time when you're browsing some apps. I don't know if the apps need to be optimized more because it's not the device because the device doesn't seem to be sluggish around most things that I use. It's uh, some of the high profile apps that I've used are actually the slowest, which is kind of frustrating at times. And because of that, I haven't been able to enjoy this phone as much as I could. On paper, I think this is an awesome device. Call Dad. Oop. Call Dad. Calling Dad. Okay, you see it? It's cancel that. What's the traffic like in San Jose? Searching it's... for traffic lights, San Jose. Okay, see, it's not his best. Who is the uh, Who is the president of the United States? Searching for who is the president of United States. So you can see there are obviously a lot of good things to like about this, some things to complain about, but the total package just doesn't match up with the other options out there. I don't see anything about this other than a really nice interface to say, you know what, I should get this instead of the other phones out there. If you're a Windows phone fan, this is the device to have. If you're a Windows fan and you use mostly Windows products, this is the device to have. But if you're someone looking for that, the wealth of options that you get in the App Store or Google Play, this might not be the one for you. And because of that, I say the Lumia 920 is a great device, but it's not the total package.